September 25th. And do not be conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Romans 12, 2. The world and the love of it and conformity to it may please and assist the life of sense, but it is opposed to and will retard the life of faith. Not more opposed in their natures are the flesh and the spirit, darkness and light, sin and holiness. Then are a vigorous life of faith and a sinful love of the world. Professor of the gospel, guard against the world. It is your great bane. Watch against conformity to it in your dress, in your mode of living, in the education of your children, in the principles, motives, and policies that govern you. Grieve not, then, the Holy Spirit of God by any known inconsistency of conduct, any sinful conformity to the world, any inordinate pursuit of its wealth, its honors, its pleasures, its friendships, and its great things. Pray against the sin of covetedness, that cankerworm that feeds at the root of so many souls. Pray against the love of dress, that sin that diverts the mind of so many professors from the simplicity of Christ and takes the eye off from the true adornment. Pray against a thirst for light and trifling reading, that strange and sinful inconsistency of so many, the certain tendency of which is to starve the life of God in the soul, to engender a distaste for spiritual ailment, for the word of God, for holy meditation, and for divine communion and fellowship. Yes, pray against the spirit of worldly, sinful conformity in everything, that the Holy Spirit do not be grieved, and that Christ do not be dishonored and crucified afresh in you and through you. It is to be feared that much of the professed Christianity of the day is of a compromising character. The spirit that marks so many is, Well, what you give me, and I will deliver him unto you. There is a betraying of Christ before the world, a bartering of Christianity for its good opinion, its places of honor and influence, and emulate. The world, the flesh, and Satan are ever on the alert to frame a bargain with the Christian professor for his religion. What will you give me in return? is the eager inquiry of many. O oh, awful state, O oh, fearful deception, O oh, fatal delusion, reader, are you a professing Christian? Then guard against the least compromise of your principles, the least betrayal of Jesus, the first step in an inconsistency of walk, Above all, pray and watch against a worldly Christianity, a Christianity that wears a fair exterior, so far as it is composed of attendance upon sanctuary services and sacraments and religious institutions, but which excludes from it the cross of the meek and lowly Lamb of God, a Christianity which loves the world and the things of the world, which makes a fair show in the flesh, speaks well of Christ, and yet betrays him with a kiss. Let not this be a model of your religion. The world is the sworn enemy of your Savior. Let it not be your friend. No, come out of it, and be you separate.